Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Arm here today, back with another Black Desert video. Today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to maximize your profits when you go to sell stuff as a free-to-play player in Black Desert. This video, spoiler alert, is just going to be talking about the free value pack method, hoarding stuff up, how to save stuff in different areas to maximize your inventory space, and all that good crap. So if you already know how to do all of this, well, you're just a professional Black Desert player and you should downvote all my videos. But if you are a newer player, you'll probably find something useful from within this video. So quickly before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, new to Black Desert, or you've been watching videos on my channel and still haven't subscribed yet, please consider it helping to grow my channel. I'm pushing for 100k this year, so friggin' close. Just, just put me over the top, please. And anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, right off the bat, during my live streams, I get asked all of the friggin' time, Levi, why don't you play with a value pack? Levi, why don't you have any buffs active and blah, 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 blah. And the honest answer is because I would never take much use out of those. As the majority of you know, I only really log into Black Desert during the week to make YouTube videos, and by the time I'm done editing them and getting ready to go, it's time for bed. So I really only play the game on the weekends, and it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to buy a value pack for weeks at a time if I'm only going to use it two days a week. Fortunately for free-to-play players, or players who are like in my situation where you're not going to get the full use out of a week-long value pack to sell your items on the marketplace, you can buy one for loyalties in the Pearl Shop. If you go to the Pearl Shop tab, click on the loyalties option, and type in the search box up here, value, you will find a value pack for 2,800 loyalties right here. It is a one day value pack, which means the rest of this video is going to be about optimizing that one day that you have the value pack active, while also showing you how to cope with not having a value pack on all of the time. And I should erase any confusion you might have. This is the loyalty value pack for one day. You get 200 loyalties every single day that you log into Black Desert which means once every two weeks, you can buy this loyalty value pack right here that you see that lasts for one day. So this is a free to play method for getting a value pack. Now the buffs of a value pack can be broken up into two categories. The first category are these sort of burst effects, right? These are things where you can stockpile stuff up over the two weeks that you've had leading up until you get this value pack and then do them all at once and then you don't need to do anything again. So these buffs are the 30% marketplace tax increase, the ability to invest in remote nodes, and your ability to change your character's appearance. You then have the second category, which are sort of passive buffs, which are like quality of life improvements. So inventory space increases, EXP buffs, barter bonuses, and the ability to dye your character's appearances. Let's start off with the burst ones though, because they're the most important ones and they're the ones you're gonna to wanna to take the most advantage of. And the first one on the list is gonna be fashion because it's the true end game. And that's gonna be use of the ability to change your character's appearance. If you press the escape key on the keyboard, navigate to the character tab and go to the beauty album you'll be taken back to the character creation. You can then go to the customization tab and change any appearance feature you would like on your character. You can then click the save file feature, which is underneath my webcam and you can't see it, but I swear it's in the bottom left corner of your screen. Change the name of this. So what you want to call it is like new Musa or whatever you're going to call it down here and hit confirm. When you do have your value pack active, you can come back down to the same menu here and click on the load file option, which is right next to the save file and select whatever preset you want to that you just saved. So in the weeks leading up to your value pack, you can adjust the character appearance however you'd like, get an idea of how you want your character to look after, and then import that change and hit apply when you do have the value pack active. You don't actually need a value pack to do any of the character creation and adjustments, you just have to have it active when you hit the apply button. So you can set yourself up so that way when you do have the value pack active, you can just knock it out all at once. The next one we're gonna take a look at is going to be the marketplace, and the marketplace is also another easy one to just do in one burst when you have a value pack active for a day. So if we open up the central marketplace, as you probably are aware, you get taxed 35% of whatever you sell on for if you don't have a value pack active. If you do have a value pack active, it comes out to about 15% of a marketplace tax. So it's a significant jump. What you can do to get around this is pile stuff up in your sold menu, but do not collect. So how do you do this? All you're gonna do is like list something on the central market and list it for one above whatever you were initially gonna sell it for. So as you can see, I've listed these sharp black crystal shards and they didn't sell instantly because I put them slightly above the current going price. What's gonna happen is eventually when somebody does buy these, it's gonna go into this status that you see right here of collect. So I've got all these different accessories that I picked up throughout the last month here and they're all waiting to collect. You do not get taxed on the sale until you hit this collect button right here. So you can stockpile a ton of stuff in the items to be sold over here in the central market, as well as having listed some, but not hit the collect button. So when you do have a value pack active, all you gotta do is pop the collect button and you will claim all of the silver with the 15% tax instead of the 35% tax. 
The final sort of burst buff here that the value pack provides you is the ability to remotely connect and disconnect nodes. Now this one's going to require a bit of planning on your end to decide what you want to connect and disconnect whenever you have the value pack active. And really I can't tell you how to do that, it's just something you should be aware of that if you plan on redoing your node network, a great time to do it is when you have a value pack active. That way you don't have to run around the map. You can also make use of the new node connection tool that's located in the bottom of the map where you can select two different locations and pick to figure out the fastest way to connect those nodes. So that's how you can take advantage of all the different burst effects of the value pack. Now let's take a look at these sort of passives that you're going to be missing out on. And the first one are inventory slots. And in truth, there's no easy way to deal with the lack of inventory slots on your main character without buying actual inventory slots. You do have the family inventory where you get a couple of slots for free for playing through some story quests. So that lets you put potions and foods and different items like that in. And it gives you an extra 100 LT to store those different items in. But beyond the family inventory, you're kind of out of luck. Same goes for storage, although storage can be sort of remedied by buying different buildings in towns using contribution points. Still though, missing out on that 16 extra slots is kind of tough for a lot of people, especially if you don't have a lot of contribution. There are a few things that you can do to help get around this as well though. First things first is that you can always use the central market warehouse. The central market warehouse is limited by a warehouse capacity, not really limited by the number of slots that you can have in a location. So you can put a lot of stuff in your central market warehouse, you just have to be mindful of the capacity limit. Keeping in the theme of storage, you have two additional locations where you get a ton of stuff. The first one is your challenges tab. This is the Y key on the keyboard for PC players, and you get a ton of stuff in here. People always complain that I ruin their OCD by having hundreds of items unclaimed in the challenges tab, but I'm gonna be honest with you, this is 263 inventory slots that I don't have to find in game, and I can pull whenever I need the item. Like if for some reason I needed a loot scroll, I have 20 of them sitting right here. All I got to do is click claim and I can pull it out and use it whenever I want. You also have the B key on the keyboard, which is the Black Spirit safe. And as you can see, I have a ton of other items sitting in here as well. So my big advice here is to make sure to keep these items in these storages until you're ready to use them. This is free storage that doesn't go anywhere. It never expires. Like even in this menu, if it says it expires, it doesn't expire. It's still going to be there. Two more quick tips about dealing with storage. There are a ton of different cities in this game that you can dump stuff in. Tons of them. Don't be afraid to spread out your different resources to different cities in the game, even if you're never going to visit those cities. This is all free storage space. Feel free to put items in here that you don't really use that often. You can always put an alt character at one of these towns so that you can access those different items whenever you need them. Further still, if you are still struggling with inventory space, you can also use the wagon method. For this one, all you do is buy a wagon and you put tons of items in the wagon, then check the wagon into your stable all the items will be inside of that wagon. So for example, this wagon that I have over here in Heidel has a ton of different potions on it that I don't use very frequently. So if I decide that I need any of those potions, I can just take the mount out, take the potions off and put it back into storage. So that's gonna help you deal with the storage space limitations that you have without a value pack. Next up is carry weight. And to answer that, if you're a life skiller, you can get around this really easily using a Rosar or Uria set with the Garish crystal set in it. This is 150 LT increase, and if you use the more expensive crystals, it bumps up to, I believe, 200. Don't quote me on that, though. I could be wrong. At any rate, it's basically the same as the effect of the value pack. I use these all the time when I'm out gathering. If you're grinding, you are going to have to sacrifice some AP to put those two crystal sets on. So if you really need that weight, you'll have to think twice before you do it. But honestly, if the weight is the most important thing to you, it is an option that you can do. And that's just going to leave us with things that I have no answer for you. EXP buffs, you can use scrolls, but you're never going to get that 30% from something else. Likewise, the barter refreshing stuff only applies to people who are really interested in bartering. However, there's no other way to get around that as well. Also, you won't have access to the daily scroll as well as the ability to dye your outfit whenever you want. So those are just losses you're going to have to take not having a value pack active 100% of the time. But for me, those are losses that I can live with. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. So I do hope this offered you some tips to help you play this game as a bit more free to play type player with specific regards to the value pack. If it is going to help you out, do let me know in the comment section below. Also, once again, like I begged for earlier, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I got tons of Black Desert content. It comes out all the time. You'll love it, I promise. And I look forward to seeing you at the next YouTube video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you at the next live stream over on Twitch, the next YouTube video right here, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.